Hey there, Superior Shave fans and other humans. This is a razor I have had over 20 years. La Grolo. Does it say hospital on it or does it say Thiers Assard? It just says La Grolo made in France. I believe this is one of the pieces that Thiers Assard produced and bought from the company who originally had the La Grolo trademark. So it was forged long ago before they got a hold of it. I do like the razor a lot, but it's a slightly thicker grind than I'm used to, you can see there. It's really the only thicker razor that I would say I I do like a lot. <laughs> Sounds healthy, but let's see if I take it to my water stone that's shaped like a two meter wheel. There it is. You see that curve there? So let's go hone on that for a while until I really start to take over the bevel with those marks. Those marks will start from the spine side of the of the bevel where you can see the scratches and it will move gradually toward the edge. Hone on that until I overtake about 50% of what is there and then switch to a hone with a long shape and then finish on this Norton Ascent and Strop. Hopefully it sounds thinner and let's shave on camera. I haven't done that in a long time, right? That step is going to take probably 15 to 20 minutes. Pretty hard steel. I've been at it about 10 minutes. Are we at the point where the uh, where the thinning stone has gotten the most it can get? Now when I use my 8x loop, I really only see one scratch pattern. And I can't tell whether or not the thinning stone has taken so much from the bevel that what re remains from the, from, the, from the spot you can see with your naked eye till the ending, when that gets really thin, it just flexes to the curve of the of the stone. And when that happens, you'll start to have contact on the apex from your rougher stone, and then you're still the the naked edge, the naked eye line is still making progress toward the tip. I feel like once you're cutting on the edge, that's probably the point where you should switch. And I just wanted to show you this is my binocular stereo microscope. So right now it's at about 25 times magnification. Normally I do it in such a way that my my uh, hands are braced, but rather than looking like you see in a microscope, like a USB microscope and things on other threads, where they're looking straight down from a top of the edge, I'm trying to look directly at the cutting edge and move it ever so slightly toward, toward the objectives. There's two objectives in there feeding two eyepieces and they're spaced apart. And by doing that you can get a sense of the curve, although um, yeah, I, I really need a hand brace, but let me just take a look here. And now I'm just angling it to see, uh, ooh, I've got a little bit of rust on the oxidation or pitting on the, on the concavity zone. So we definitely have scratches going all the way to the edge from that thousand grit stone. So it's time to switch to the finer stones. Here we have my lovely coticule shaped as a 21 foot cylinder with a plate I don't sell anymore because it costs too much to manufacture, but I'm glad I kept one for myself. Now because we've made the whole thing so thin, it's going to take no time at all to overcome the slightly craggy edge that I saw on the tip of this razor at about 25 times magnification with my binocular microscope over there just a minute ago. I can certainly feel the bevel itself bending to this stone. I don't know how beneficial going crazy with the concavity will be on this razor because it is, I don't know, maybe a half hollow, somewhere in that range. It might even just be a quarter to a half it's not particularly thinly ground. Uh, it wasn't supposed to be. Maybe the forging process just went really well and that's why I like this razor. Although when you're with my right thumb touching the heel, it feels thin enough for good work. I'm gonna try to lighten my pressure here. And use the really beautiful spot on here. I wish the whole hone was this no red splotches zone. It has just absolutely tremendous feedback 
and there's a bit of a carving sensation in the areas with the red. What did I see? I saw these new finer scratches taking over approximately the first half of the width of the bevel. Uh, and the cutting edge looked very fine, expect, except one or two spots still had a couple of tiny pieces of missing steel. Sacrificing some of the thinness of our bevel made on the previous step by honing more on this longer shaped wheel because we need to remove the degradation that the first step did to the cutting edge. You don't want to have any little bumps on there that you can see at such low magnification when you're shaving. Now when I go to the Norton Ascent, it's going to take those type of things right off as long as I get them real, real small. Okay, Superior Shave fans and our humans, uh, I have had a good look in the microscope and I believe what I am seeing are areas of the cutting edge which are weaker than other adjacent areas because of nearby pitting on the hollow grind area of the razor just behind where the bevel now sits. So unfortunately, the razor is mildly compromised, but if you've ever looked at um, a double-edged razor blade that you just had a great shave off of and you magnified it, and looked at it, um, you know, at 125 times magnification, you will often see things that you would look at and think, well, I don't want to shave with that. So how'd you get a good shave from it? The answer is because it's so thin. That's why. It just shaves well because it's so damn thin. So I don't want to discard this razor for that. It's probably the only razor I have that's been made since the late 90s that has any such pitting like that. I don't think any of my other razors have it and I have been uh, using the sleeves for uh, I don't uh, 12 years or so. But um, I'm going to have to give that skinny bevel a little, more, a little bit more time on this Norton Ascent Stone, which is flat, uh, in order to make the compromised two thin areas of the bevel plane hold up a little bit better. So what you're doing now is, by putting an isosceles triangle shape, at the front of the razor, you are thickening the cutting edge versus my previous hones that you've seen, which were all wheel shaped. That is far, far longer than I should spend on that stone. Hopefully when I go look now in the magnifier, those areas that have little spots where edge is missing and right next to that particular spot and not in other spots, there is a pitting element just behind the cutting edge. Hopefully those got thicker and didn't break down more. If they broke down more, maybe I just have to retire this razor for me. You could make it shave good again, but you'd have to take off quite a bit of steel to do that. And I don't prefer razors like that, but let me go take a look. Well, I wish you could see what I see, guys. The razor, when you look at it at about 25 times magnification with the binoscope, you can literally see the bevel getting thinner and thinner and thinner, and then a thicker line right at the edge because what happened was the bevel was actually longer and then you took your flat stone and reduced the width of the razor and made the tip, you know, instead of being coming together like that, it's got a little thing like this on the front of it. Now it can only take from metal that was previously shaped like that, but you're still stunting it off a little bit, and you will see uh, it looks like a the the all the light comes together right at the edge. However, because the whole thing is so thin, I would imagine it strops better, and I I'm convinced it will shave better. Let's see if we could hear anything different on the strops.
Now I'm actually curious to um, take a look to see if the edge broke down just from strop. I've taken a look. There is no doubt that pitting has mildly compromised this razor. However, I still want to shave with it because I know it's also the thinnest that I've ever had in 22 years approximately. I shall be most curious to see if on Monday after I would strop this razor after it sits around for three days, are those problem areas where it is willing to chip away because that pitting is right behind the cutting edge bevel, did they grow? And I would wonder, um, could you use a pasted strop on a concave surface, thus intentionally thickening the very tip of the cutting edge enough to overcome that problem. But it just goes to show, man, rust only needs like a, it only needs a moment. Rust never sleeps. I always dried this razor very thoroughly, like any razor, but, you know, I had razors for over a decade before the sleeves came along. There you have it. Let's get cleaned up. Just over there editing. Honestly, I've been editing for about an hour. I can fault the shave in no way. Especially around there. It's really tremendous right there. Uh, you know, not as close as I want here and there. Not as electric a shave during the shave because it just doesn't have that flex that a really hollow razor has. But you could play with sharpening paste and so forth to keep the edge crisp enough and run that thing out for several years. You just can't really 
work behind completely those areas that are pitted because some of them start right behind the bevel and one of them is like a little bump of oxidation that's a 32nd of an inch or more and right in front of that before I thickened the edge it was having a little chip spot so if I did not thicken the edge there and I tried to take the whole thing back you didn't lose I don't know more than a 16th of a razor is it really worth all that trouble uh, best to just keep it the way it is to me Anyway, hey, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.